Welcome to Sand Shark Snapshot, bringing you the latest news on the USCB Sand Sharks. Hello and welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Snapshot. I'm your host Justin Jarrett, joined as always by Bracken Lambert, and we're here to talk a little USCB athletics. Been another exciting week here as the fall season rolls along. Uh, women's golf played last week up in Charleston, had a little bit of a rough time on the links against the Division One teams, but uh, getting a little more experience under their belt as we move forward with this fall campaign. The cross-country teams were up in Charlotte over the weekend at the Queen's Invitational and ran very well. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Melissa Carter with a personal best for the women, and Anthony Vecchio ran a great time to lead the men. And then, of course, Sand Shark Soccer. And it's really starting to heat up now. The playoff chase in the Sun Conference is on. And USCB right in the thick of it thanks to a great comeback on Sunday afternoon. Down 2 nothing at halftime. Came back to win 3-2 at Warner University. That was a key win. And now USCB in good shape. If we can take care of business uh, the next couple of weekends, we can move up the standings. And uh, still in play for a home game in the first round. That's probably a little bit outside the scope of reality but it is a possibility um, more likely is a sixth or seventh place finish which would be a fifth or sixth seed in the playoffs and a road game against the three or four seed uh, which would be hopefully a winnable game and uh, things back on track now is looking a little dire at halftime yesterday down to nothing but Bracken this team has shown us time and time again uh, resilient able to come back score three goals in the second half that's right um, they've played very well we wasn't able to keep up with the Weber game this weekend. You know, they took a 3-0 three no, three no loss at Weber. But we came back against Warner University, down, like you said, down 2-0 at halftime. But the resilience of that team came back. Um, Coach Ed Heberling changed up the formation in the second half, trying to get the offense going. You know, the defense was must have been a little bit shaky or, you know, a big road game, the Florida victory tour, <laughs> as we like to call it, not so much. A victory tour, but a win, getting getting a win nonetheless is a big deal. So, come home with a split, one and one. It's the same thing we did last year when both those teams visit, visited Finland Field. So, we'll take that. And like you said, we're right in the thick of things. We've got SCAD this weekend, and then we wrap up the home stand or the home regular season here against Southeastern and Ave Maria. Hopefully, two winnable games, which we we took care of last year. Yeah, SCAD, a very difficult game, of course. Um, they've been receiving votes in the top 25. They were ranked in the top 25, just dropped down to receiving votes last week. Have to play at their place, 7 o'clock Friday evening. Uh, that's going to be a pretty intense atmosphere. I expect students will turn out for that one, a little rivalry across the river here. Um, and that's going to be a tough contest, no doubt about it. But even if we drop that one, as you mentioned, two very winnable games the following weekend with Southeastern and Ave Maria back at home. Um, those are two games that on paper look like games we should win. And if we do, we're sitting at 12 points in the conference. And uh, as far as I can tell, that's going to put us either 6th or 7th, depending on how some other things shake out, which would be uh, you know, a spot better than, than our finish last year. Um, so that would be excellent. And 6th and would be really good because the goal was the top half of the conference in a 12-team league. A 6th place finish would achieve that, um, and it would give us a, a much more – uh, competitive game in the first round of the playoffs, presumably. So um, off to a good start to conference play, uh, or I guess we're about midway through now. Um, you know, I think that, that Coach Eberling would say that there are a couple that we felt like maybe we should have been a little bit more competitive. But then on the other hand, you've got a one nothing loss to Embry-Riddle, um, which was far more competitive than probably most people expected us to be. So a little helter-skelter, looking for that consistency uh, a full 90 minutes, you know, I don't think we've seen that except in the Embry-Riddle game. So um, maybe we'll find it these next two weeks. Uh, so we're, that's what exactly what we're hoping for. But like you said, you know, it's a it's a tough conference and it's a tough schedule. N no matter what team you're going to play, we're always going to be playing Embry-Riddle. We're always going to be playing Thomas. Those two teams are, you know, receiving top 25 votes. Embry-Riddle, a national power. And then next year it looks like we'll be playing Northwood again. I mean, you know, you can't get in a break in this conference. So uh -huh. Unless you're recruiting in Norway and Switzerland, <laughs> Iceland, Germany, anywhere in Europe, you know, you, you're going to try and be as competitive as, as you can be. But we're, we're getting pretty good recruiting over there. We've got, you know, up north Canada and taking over England. So a couple of Canadians, let's do it. A couple of Brits. So uh, 
Yeah, we've got our international flavor for sure. And, um, you know, the good news is these last three conference games will be sleeping in our own bed, and I don't think you can underestimate that. I saw some mm-hmm. tweets over the weekend of having a rough night of sleep in the hotel, and um, that, that's a big deal. You know, you get out of bed and your, your body's not feeling 100%, sleeping on an unfamiliar mattress and everything. So even the game at SCAD is just over or around the bend in Hardyville. So it'll be great to sleep in our own beds and, and uh, hopefully come out fresh and play well those three games. That's right. This game against SCAD is going to be huge. And like you said, I do think a lot of students are going to end up going out there. But these next two against Ave Maria and Southeastern are going to be huge as well. So we're looking forward to some exciting regular season wrap-up here at Finland. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we get that get that five seed. We could have another game over at SCAD in the playoffs, which would be very interesting. And um, – be an easy trip uh, for everybody involved and have some good fan support so looking forward to that well we'll talk uh, a little more sand shark soccer when we hand out the performers of the week later in the show and uh, we'll be right back in just a moment with a few minutes a few minutes with uh, uscb baseball coach brian llewellyn to talk about his team's fall practice At the University of South Carolina Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sandshark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. Welcome back to Sand Shark Snapshot. As promised, we're joined now by USCB baseball coach Brian Llewellyn. And Brian, you've wrapped up things for the fall, uh, gotten a good look at what you have this season with uh, quite a few new faces and new names. Tell us a little bit about how the team looked this fall. Um, you know, really pleased with our time on the field in the fall. We're, we're into the weight room now doing that sort of thing. But, um, you know, we, we returned a good uh, nucleus of guys from last year's team, and, and some new guys have come in that have done some, uh, done some nice things for us. I think, uh, I, I think we'll be in good shape replacing the guys that we lost, um, you know, just trying to figure out uh, uh, where guys fit best on the mound now and, and kind of figure out that lineup. But, uh, you know, overall, I was pleased with the fall, um, you know, kind of that learning curve that you always go through. But the good thing for us was, like I mentioned, we had the good uh, nucleus of guys from last year's club uh, back to kind of catch them up to speed. Yeah, it's always nice. You know, last year you, you kind of went into it thinking it was a little bit of a rebuilding year, but then to, you know, made a little run at the end, got into the NAIA opening round. Um, always nice when the rebuilding year is still uh, deemed a success as far as, uh, you know, what the end result is. So um, with that foundation kind of built up a little bit again after losing all those seniors two years ago, um, you know, is it kind of the sky's the limit this year for this team? Um, you know, I wouldn't say that. Uh, we like where we're at, and if we can pick up where we left off last year, we'll be in good shape. Um, but, uh, um, you know, um, it, it, tough to replace the 19 seniors we lost two years ago. That, that they, they set the bar high. Um, the, this group this year, I like them a lot. Um, there, there's still some unknown. Uh, but, but if we can pick up where we left off last year, uh, we'll, we'll be in good shape. You kind of went to uh, went to the well of the junior college and, and transfer route to try to add some veteran leadership there. You feel like you've uh, achieved that. You've got some experienced players coming in. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, as we've kind of talked about briefly, uh, the the group of guys back from last year, we really felt like, you know, we were only missing a guy in in two or three spots that we lost. Uh, if we could replace those guys with guys who had, had you know a year or two of playing under their belt. Uh, we could just, you know, kind of pick up where we left off. So that's that's the route we kind of tried to go. Uh, we only added one uh, uh, high school player. Um, the rest were all junior college and transfer guys. Um, so we, we like that they've got experience under their belt. Now it's just trying to get them to play Sandshark baseball. Uh, always only go as far as your pitching staff will carry you, mm-hmm. it seems like. Um, lost a couple of the top guys with Miles Galvin and Kyle McCullough. I know Miles is still around helping out with the mm-hmm. coaching staff. Um, who are some of the guys that you're looking to replace those arms, and, and who will we see on the mound for USCB? Yeah, we, we've added some guys that we like that, uh, that we think can, uh, can help us. You know, uh, always tough to, to replace guys like Miles, uh, Kyle, Andrew Barino. Um, but uh, some of the new guys that are coming in that are doing some nice things for us, uh, Christian Pfaff uh, had, a, had a good fall. Um, 
Junior De La Torre will probably step up into a bigger role this year and, and maybe get a little more action. Uh, David Hannon is a guy who was with us last year that, that did some nice things in the fall. Um, Jason Boulay, a transfer from Georgia State. Um, um, you know, it, there's, there's some other guys that have done some nice things as well. So uh, really just trying to replace uh, uh, Galvin, McCullough, Barano, those type guys. If we can do that, we'll be in good shape. Uh, that's a tall task, as you know, because those guys really did a lot of good things for us. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, it seems a little early to talk about uh, college baseball, but then again, you know, February will be here before we it know will. it. Just a few more months, and it seems like you uh, wake up from Christmas, and all of a sudden it's baseball season. So, not too long to go, and we'll look forward to talking to you when the season gets a little bit closer, Coach. Thanks for joining us on the, on the snapshot. All right, thank you, Justin. We'll be right back with more on Sand Shark Snapshot. Welcome back to Sandshark Snapshot. We're almost done with another edition, and that means it's time to hand out the hardware. Performers of the week, and Bracken, as always, you'll have the honors. Who are you giving the first one to? This week we're heading, uh, we're heading just over the bridge and onto Hilton Head, and we're going to hand it out to the freshman from Hilton Head High School, or the graduate from Hilton Head High School, Bridget Noonan. We've been saying all year that she could be a spark plug in the middle of, that, in the, middle of the field, um, we've moved her from midfielder to forward to defender, and in the second half of against Warner, she finally picked it up and picked up, picked up her first two collegiate goals. So, Bridget, congratulations this week. I'm handing it out to you. Tying goal and the winning goal, so a uh, pretty good way to get your first two goals of your collegiate career. We knew she had that potential because she created a lot of opportunities early in the season, couldn't finish them off. And then we had to move her back to center back to shore up the defense, which she's done. She's played great back there. But uh, Coach Eberling had to switch some things up to get a little electricity going up front. We'd gone four and a half goal games without a goal. And uh, Alexa Muffler got one, and then Bridget got two. We win it 3-2, so a great job by Bridget. And uh, I'm going to have to go back to the cross-country course once again for my Performer of the Week. And this time it's Melissa Carter. Melissa and Joy Miller trading that uh, school record off and on. Melissa had it. Joy took it away last week. It must have lit a fire under Melissa because she uh, – crushed the school record in her PR, shaved 33 seconds off her PR to run an 18.26 in the 5K race at the Queen's Royal Invitational. Incredible time, and uh, that little intra-squad comp competition up at the top of the lineup has been great for USCB cross country. The women really running hard in those, those top two spots. Jamie Thomas doing well at three, and then the four and five are coming along uh, with Melissa LaBelle, Malia Powers, Sarah Turbiati. So uh, it's looking good for the Sand Sharks October 26th at home, the Sand Shark Invitational, and then they'll be back on that same course for the Sun Conference Championship. Come out and see them out in Hardyville. It's fun to watch these gals and uh, guys and girls both race on the, on the 5K course and the 8K course out there. It's, uh, if you've never spectated a cross-country meet, it's probably not what you expect. It's actually kind of fun. You see them go through several times, and, um, it, and it's pretty exciting. So come out and see the Sand Sharks. And uh, come and see us again next week with another episode of Sand Shark Snapshot. Until then, keep your fins up. This has been Sand Shark Snapshot, a production of the University of South Carolina Beaufort Athletics Department.